In a previous video, I have already discussed the hard problem of quantum mechanics interpretation. To encapsulate it shortly, the quantum theory in the early 20th century revealed that our reality at its core is probabilistic rather than deterministic. While in classical physics an elementary particle has an exact descriptor and state, it is not the case in quantum physics. Elementary particles such as electrons have a certain probability of being in one state rather than the other. It is only after interacting with other particles in what we call an observation that an electron takes a definite value for itself. And the more we research, the more it seems like particles are choosing states on random, by the margin of chance. This bizarre regularity lies at the core of our modern understanding of the world. And it hasn't let physicists or philosophers rest ever since its discovery more than a hundred years ago. We still don't know how exactly, and more importantly, why exactly this takes place. Over the years, many theories have been proposed trying to explain this. By a large margin, the leading theory in current physics is the Copenhagen interpretation of quantum mechanics. It takes the problem of non-determinism head-on. In the Copenhagen interpretation, every system is described by a wave function, from which you calculate the probability of a specific measurement outcome. Confused? Let's try to imagine an example. Picture a particle which enters a beam splitter. It has a 50% chance of going left and a 50% chance of going right. But once you have measured the particle, you know with 100% probability where it is. This means that the wave function has collapsed. This approach may seem more like a brute forcing of facts down a reality we can't understand rather than a genuine attempt at an interpretation. Another theory, which we will discuss today, is the many worlds interpretation of quantum mechanics. Proposed by physicist Hugh Everett in the 1950s, MWY states that when a measurement is made on a quantum system, rather than collapsing into a single outcome as in the Copenhagen interpretation, the universe itself branches into multiple parallel worlds, each representing a different outcome of the measurement. In other words, it denies the phenomenon of wave function collapse. The wave function never collapses. Every possible outcome of a measurement actually occurs, but in separate universes that exist alongside our own, not outside, but parallel in the space-time continuum. Let's take our previous example to make it simpler. When our electron again enters a beam splitter, in MWY world, it doesn't randomly choose to go left or right. Instead, the electron exists in a superposition of states which doesn't collapse, with one version of the electron going left and another version going right. These versions continue to evolve independently in separate branches of reality, leading to a multitude of parallel universes, or many worlds. Each world follows its own trajectory, and every possible outcome of a measurement is realized in one of these worlds. And yes, it means what you think it does. At every nanosecond, the universe splits an infinite amount of times into infinite possible universes, where every single electron chooses one position over another. Everything that is possible to exist does actually exist in a world parallel to ours. There is a universe where you made this video, and I am the one watching it. It's not a mere possibility, it does exist. This might seem like something out of the realm of science, but the mathematics behind the many worlds interpretation are actually fully coherent. There are no inherent contradictions to the idea of multiple world interpretation of quantum mechanics in mathematics. And it does actually manage to solve the hard problem of quantum mechanics. It is certainly a way to reconcile the probabilistic nature of quantum mechanics with the determinism we observe in classical physics. Those are the precise reasons why many people in academia believe this interpretation to be true. After all, who could resist this idea? Well, 
it would appear that the many worlds interpretation has indeed many problems. And its Achilles heel is a teapot flying between the orbits of Mars and Jupiter. Imagine that I inform you of a teapot flying between Mars and Jupiter, just outside the asteroid belt. You might try to argue against that idea. You might claim that there is almost zero possibility of a teapot making into a stable orbit in the asteroid belt. You might call it nonsense, but ultimately, it is what is called an unfalsifiable claim. Just like an unobservable and untouchable teapot, two astronomical units far from the Sun, the existence or non-existence of the multiverse is non-falsifiable. By definition, we can never prove whether it exists or not. And if we cannot prove it, does it actually exist? In other words, does the fact that it is possible that other worlds might exist make them exist just because we cannot disprove their existence? The question now turns almost religious. Merely being mathematically sound doesn't grant a theory validity. Just ask the string theorists, they have been trying to reinvent physics for a century now, yet mathematics alone cannot do it. Physics requires empirical data, which MWY will never provide. After all, it's fine to claim that an invisible goblin lives in your house, but it's not fine to publish papers about it. A more serious problem in the theory is called the preferred basis problem. If the Schrodinger equation for the state of the universe is all there is to the physics of the universe, then all factorizations of the universe into subsystems and all bases are on par. And that means either none of them corresponds to something real, or all of them are real. Now the difficulty here lies in reconciling this branching of reality with our subjective experiences where we constantly observe a single definite outcome rather than a superposition of possibilities. MWY fails to explain how and why our subjective experience aligns with a single outcome and gives the appearance of a classical reality. It raises questions about the role of observers and consciousness in the theory and how the branching of reality relates to our perception of a definite outcome. Some proponents of MWY suggest that consciousness itself is a subject to the same quantum superposition and branching, but it generates even more convoluted dialogues and in the end doesn't really land us anywhere near a scientific theory. This reason alone is why the Copenhagen interpretation reigns supreme in academia. Ultimately, the search for a definite interpretation of quantum mechanics has never ceased, and I am in no position at all to claim with certainty that the MWY is absolutely right or wrong. It is through ongoing research and exploration that we strive to unravel the mysteries of our quantum reality. But a question which I would like you to answer for yourself is, can you accept something unprovable? I myself can't, hence why I lean towards the other interpretations of quantum mechanics. But do you? How about the you in a parallel universe? I had no idea until I got one. So Casper here is a Halloween moon crab, and they don't live in the water or anything. They dig in the dirt, but they do have to keep their gills moist. And so sometimes if you like put water on them, then they'll start to like moisten their gills, or if they'll like dip in water, you can hear it. It is the coolest noise ever. We'll see if he holds still. Um, but it kind of sounds like. Um, but yeah, let's see. Hey, I'm a fucking crab. <laughs> I'm walking here. <laughs> Fuck. Isn't that so cool? It's not my feedback.